to NBC News Radio. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda at 106.5 FM K293 CF Moreno Valley. All right, good evening. Welcome to the Ferrandose Show on KCAA Radio 106.5 FM 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCAA Radio.com website this Sunday night. You know how we get started. We got to bless the show. What's up? Let's go. When I was in my mother's womb, I had a calling on my life to do something in the glory of God and marry it like a wife. Commit myself to his word and never be led astray. And when it's all over, when he comes, I'll be glad to see that day in the morning time. All right. Good evening. Welcome to the Frondose Show right here on KCAA Radio 106.5 FM. 10:50 a.m. on also some other streaming platforms too as you'll find out later on tonight the station that leaves no listeners behind uh the frondosi show so we got a you know, you know full episode what, what what's going on back there <laughs> we got a full episode tonight we're live well, i'm live in the studio um all of my guests my partners my teammates are on the line tonight so i'm here in the station if you want to watch uh, me on camera Go to kcaradio.com, click listen live or watch live, and you'll catch me live. I'm Han Solo tonight uh, in the studio. Who wouldn't want to watch it? <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch FD live. Got to watch FD live. All hey, about hey. hell. Whatever. It's all about FD. Uh, so tonight we got um, full episodes for you tonight. Uh, I need to start off this first episode uh, with my guest, Jody. Uh, September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, uh, as you may know if you've been – you know, tune in or the first time you're tuning in, uh, I'm a sickle cell trait advocate. I have sickle cell trait experience, exertional sickling with rhabdomyolysis. Uh, I was dying on the inside uh, in 2006, it's severe muscle fatigue damage, joint damage, skeletal muscular damage. It pretty much ended my military career. And through my depression and anxiety and suicide ideations, uh, God showed me that uh, that sickle cell trait that ended my career. He had other plans for me. And so I have been blessed to become an advocate and travel the world speaking about sickle cell trait. So met my teammate here, Jody, uh, in 2012. Uh, it was World Sickle Cell Day, Father's Day. He's not brand new. If you've been following the show or been, you know, transferred from the other shows, uh, Jody is not brand new. Uh, we've been out traveling, getting back into the battle of the genes. So I play that here on the show as well, the red cells versus the white cells. But tonight, kicking off Sickle Cell Awareness Month, um, like I said, we've been friends since 2012 and, you know, during my advocacy work, this is, w- this is what I've, I've discovered. Some people have thought they were sickle cell trait carriers, but then the way they talked about their, um, symptoms and conditions, uh, we found that some of them also had another red blood cell condition, uh, which it's called beta thalassemia, but it's it's hard to tell because you have to look at the A2 percentage and then you have to do some more blood work for th- to be diagnosed that, right? So that's what I've been um, focusing on because a lot of times people have sickle cell trait. We want to make sure that the other symptoms that they're having, that we help them rule out uh, the other possible inherited genes or it could be another type of disease. So I always have people go back and do re- another hemoglobin electrophoresis test and do some more blood work, and then they can come back, and then we can kind of start to see what's going on. Uh, I'm not a genetic counselor, but I'm very educated in this conversation, and so, yeah, I, d- I don't do genetic counseling, but I can give people some overview, and then they can go back to their doctors and requests. So they have some kind of knowledge, you know, going back to their physicians. And so during this awareness, you know, we found people to have a high percentage of A2 and when they've gone back, some of them have had, an, they were not just sickle cell trait carriers. They actually had a type of sickle cell disease, which is called sickle cell beta thalassemia. Uh, my buddy, who's been my friend for the last, you know, 11 years, uh, tonight we're going to talk about his diagnosis because guess what? Uh, he has been misdiagnosed w- of what type of sickle cell he has uh, for about 50 plus years. So he's here to share his experience tonight, and 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 like I said, when he told me what what what, it, what he actually had, I was like, wow. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna give it away. Uh, we are gonna put Coach Will and and Rob on the hold 
and then we're gonna bring uh Jody, aka DBC. What's the count, man? Hey, what's going on, what's man? What's up, yo? Be blessed to be stressed. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, Jody and I, if you've seen on social media, we also go to the same church. We're deacons at the at the Ministry of Reconciliation. Um, Pastor Jewel Jones has embraced our whole uh, advocacy work. I, I, it just braced us as people. Um, and so we've actually grown in that church um, together. Uh, and so um, that, that's kind of what we do on outside of the sickle cell awareness. But Jody, man, introduce yourself. Don't give it away. Let them know who you are and we'll get started. It sounds like you far away a little. Oh, all right. I said introduce yourself and then um, we'll get started. My name is uh, Jody Johnson, a.k.a. GBC, born and raised Chicago, Illinois, South Side. South, South Side. Uh, I have 11 siblings, uh, seven boys and four girls. And out of the 11 siblings I was born with, so I thought, which was sickle cell SS. Yeah. And as I got older, as I got older, my body started to change. Yeah. So I took so many blood tests. Then I had my recent doctor, Dr. Fan, um, last February. He did another test, and paperwork came back that I had sickle cell beta style. Yeah. For 54 years, I always thought I had sickle cell SS. Yeah. And it blew me away. To this day, I'm still shocked. I'm I'm shocked because my symptoms is not like other sickle cell warriors' symptoms. Mm-hmm. You know, I I haven't been in the hospital since '94. Um, and my side kept bothering me, and I told my doctor about it. And I'm still learning about sickle cell today. Yeah. And my doctor, he he, re, he did another test, came back, same result, sickle cell beta thal. Yeah. And it, it, I'm still shocked to this day. And I called uh, Ferran <laughs> when I told him, he was also shocked. And I'm like, wow, out of so many people, you never, you very, you rarely hear those type of stories, yeah. you know. So when I got with Ferran. He got me actually into learning more about sickle cell traits and sickle cell disease all together. And I have two daughters that have um, sickle cell traits. Yeah. So right now we are all going to get retested, my two daughters. And Farron, what was he telling me about uh, the type of test that we should take again for, for my daughters? Yeah, so that blood test, for those out there listening, um, the hemoglobin electrophoresis test will... Um, find most not all of the different types of red blood cell conditions but it will find the s and the c and the d and like i said with the sickle sick with the sickle beta thal um it doesn't find the uh thalassemia it it does but what it does is you have to look at the a2 percentage so when you when you do your blood work uh, you have a s you have uh, a a2 some people have still have baby fetal hemoglobin hemoglobin F, so you might still have some baby fetal hemoglobin, but that A2 percentage, and that's what we've been discovering the last probably about six years in helping people, you know, with their blood work and doing their blood tests and doing testing in the community, that that A2 percentage, it comes back, it'll say A2 percentage, it'll say between the range, I think the highest is supposed to be like 3.2 or something, and then it'll have a H or L if it's high or low, and if it's high, then that's where they have to do some more blood work, and then that's how they determine if it's beta thalassemia because what happens is if the A2 percentage is high, that means there's no beta thala, there's no beta gene being produced, so the A2 is making up for the missing beta, and that's why the A2 percentages are high. And so be, when I learned that, um, it was like, okay, that was something I need to let people know, become aware of, and I had no idea that my my teammate <laughs> was living with that same uh, sickle cell beta thala gene that we were trying to make sure that people, you know, were not being misdiagnosed. So to have him call me that day, um, I, I gave him the flavor flavor like, wow, that's like that's all I could say because, you know, 
he's been having all this blood work done his whole life and it wasn't sickle cell SS. It's, it's a shocker, man. Like, the, do- the doctor I have right now, about eight years, Dr. Fan. Mm-hmm. What I love about him, he, he, he makes he makes sure that I get multiple tests done every month to, just to check what my blood is. And and I asked him, my old doctor a while back, I said, you sure I have simple cell SS? Uh, Dr. Lyon, he retired. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure because your blood says this and that. I said, I said, my blood count does not tell me what type of sickle cell that I have. Mm-hmm. So I said, can you retest me? So time went by, and then I got with Dr. Fan, and he retested me and, and gave me all the right tests. Yeah. And he came back, sickle cell beta tau. And, and you know what, Jody, that after, after you know, discovering that, it, it, all, it all made sense to me because your blood count has always been so low. Right. Yeah. And so with, yeah. with sickle cell for the listeners, for si- with sickle cell beta thalassemia, that means he has he has a S gene that mutates and he has a, a, a beta thalassemia gene that are possibly smaller red blood cells and not enough. So that's why the blood count is low, because that beta gene is not producing enough red blood cells. And so though that could be the that can cause the anemia in the long term you know, over a period of time, the, the damage to the organs and the pains because you don't have enough red blood cells and then you have ones that mutate. So if you can envision that in your mind, having red blood cells that are mutating and then the other ones are not enough, um, that equals, you know, a level of type of pain, which is what sickle cell beta thalassemia. They, they have a major and they have a minor because they, they have the, the one that can have beta thalassemia, but you can have more red blood cells that are smaller, then that's too many, that's too much red blood cells. So it just mm-hmm. depends on the way that you've disguised, described yours, you know, since I've known you, that you was like, look, a, a 5.3 most of the time? Most of the time, for the last 40 years, it's always been a 5. Yeah. Now it's at a 6 right now. Yeah, so I, it, 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 it makes sense, makes man. Years. It makes sense. So, so I, I, Jordy and I just came from the military base um, the last uh, tour for 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 2023, and um, we were talking on the way up there, and, and I just I was like, man, like we have to share your story, man, because how many more people out there have been misdiagnosed and they don't even know it, and they're not taking care of their health possibly correctly, because that's what that could lead to. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You know what you're right because. Very seldom do I have a major crisis. If I do have a major crisis, yeah, it's like every ten to fifteen years, yeah, that I have a major crisis. And the last time I got real sick was when I came from Chicago for my dad's funeral. That's when I got really, really sick. I almost died. And then I, that's when I was thinking, I was like, well, I need to find out what type of sickle cell do I really have. And now it's all coming together. Oh. My, um, my um, back pain and my thigh didn't hurt me. And uh, that's where most of my pain is. And then my bones and my joints, it, it's always in those same areas. Same with my daughter. So I always said, damn, my side is hurting. My elbow and my bones are hurting. And that's tough for me to get retested again. And I'm glad that I did because it, it just, it kind of, it's a shocking, not only is it shocking, it's kind of scary in a sense. Right. Not a bad way, you know what I mean? Right. Kind of like, wow, who else, how many others out there like that? Right. You know? So I'm, I'm just glad that way I can go out and, and, and really share my story, you know, to the world, let them know, you know, make sure you get the right test done. Exactly. Yeah, that, you that, know, that's that way another. That's another. That's another. That's another. That's another. That's another. That's another. And like I said, it, it you know, when you, it's knowing that you have, to, for me, knowing that you have the beta, sickle beta thou, like I said, it makes sense because of the, the possibility of having not enough red blood cells can cause the types of pains that you have in your low blood count. So, like I said, yeah. the, People need to know that, like I said, to be properly diagnosed so they know how to take care of themselves. And so I've met I've met people who 
in the same your same situation. I met people who thought they were sickle cell trait carriers only, and they actually had SC because when they saw the blood work that said SC, they thought it was SCT and thought it was just a trait, but they actually had sickle cell SC, which they say is a milder case of sickle cell disease. But again, you know, you have one sickle trait and one C trait that crystallizes. So it, it's just important. You know Go ahead. Not good. Uh, that, that's true what you said. My brother called me recently. He went to the doctor. Um, he said, man, my side is bothering me. Yes. And man, my bones and stuff hurt, man. And he said that the doctor told him that uh, he has too many white uh, blood cells. Yeah. And I said, wow. And I told him that I found out uh, that I have to go sell beta style. So, so, Ron, you was telling me about what parents should have, what another parent should have. Yeah, so with, with, with your case and your family, you know, your siblings, it's possible that your siblings could have sickle beta thal as well because if they haven't really paid attention to the, the beta thalassemia gene, so in, in the case of your family, um, either your mom or your dad could have the S trait and then the mom or dad could have the beta thal. So each one of them can pass the A or the S or the A or the, or the thalassemia trait so you could have siblings that only have the beta thalassemia gene right and you can have siblings right. that only has the s or you could also have other siblings that might have sickle beta thal like yours that didn't get diagnosed properly um right. and so when you mentioned your brother i was like man that pain in the side like the bone pain he could either mm -hmm. have you know thalassemia trait by itself or he could possibly have sickle beta thal and not even known it all these years as well because the blood, the blood test doesn't just pick it up by itself. And, and again, your, your family are from an older generation, so they weren't doing newborn screenings back then, right. right? So you're talking about, you know, 95, 92, 95, depends on what state, you know, people weren't screened properly back then. Right. And even if you talk about the Black Panthers, they did do sickle cell um, trait screenings, but the, the type of kit that they used you still had to go back and get a further blood work. So people were finding out they had the trait, but they still needed to go to the doctor and get the proper diagnosis because that test only picked up the S trait. It didn't pick up if it was sickle cell SS or not. So these are the things that in our advocacy work uh, that we've been after uh, for years now, you know, it's just starting to grow and grow and more um, of our awareness mm -hmm. and, and informing people uh, about how important you know your inherited genes are and there are other there are like f hundreds of other different red blood cells you know like i said there's alpha thalassemia beta c d o arab monroe um all you know different types and i want to say this part before i let you go jody it's not just african americans we are number one because sickle cell trait combats malaria but like that beta thalassemia gene that he has that's an that's more of a asian descent type of red blood cell condition that also combats malaria so the C trait, the thalassemias, the D, the O A raps, in those parts of the world, it combats malaria. So for African Americans, the sickle cell trait combats malaria. But for those other countries, Mediterranean, Asian, they have their own genes that combat malaria. So in your bloodline, you know, you could have some Asian descent bloodline that how your family got that beta thalassemia. Yeah, well, I have Asian and Indian in my right so you know so we got some we got some work to do man i appreciate you calling in man um like i said i we we got a lot of work to do we're doing battle of the genes uh we got the sickle ready, cell man. the sickle cell I conference to, coming up yeah before i hang up i forgot to let everybody know i do christian rap i am a yes. christian rapper you check me out on youtube driven by christ jody yep. um i've been doing this since forever <laughs> uh, thank you guys uh, enjoy the rest of the show appreciate Thanks you man appreciate you cell trade awareness. man i appreciate you we got a lot of work coming up for this month of september man and again just just in the yeah, future stuff we get to create man so appreciate you for your time bro all right all right, all right i'll catch you god yeah. bless god, god bless good night everybody all right, this is the Ferrandoze Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Um, my, my engineer is not in the room right now, so I guess we're going to do a little bit of talking. If you want more information about sickle cell trait, go to wdconsct.org. Again, wdconsct.org for more sickle cell trait awareness. It is very important. Um, again, I have AS. 
uh, but I had rhabdomyolysis, which is a whole nother um, muscle condition. And so what we're learning is that some people with sickle cell trait can have that sickle cell trait exertion with the rhabdomyolysis. And the rhabdo, anybody can get rhabdo. Anybody can res get rhabdo. And the conditions or the, the symptoms of rhabdo um, could also trigger sudden death. So there are people with sickle cell trait that have um, experienced exertion with sickling and rhabdo and have had cardiac arrest and died. And if you've been watching the news, um, they has been saying that this case has been rare. Uh, so how many more deaths have to happen before we figure out that this is not rare anymore? So uh, just hoping to find out, you know, with these past children that passed away that we can help figure out um, if some of those were from dehydration. You know, everybody's got their opinions about the vaccines and all these kind of things like that. So we just want to make sure that we do our part as advocates around sickle cell trait, and, and that leads us to help bring awareness to other um, inherited genes in the community. So we're going to play our public service announcement, and then we'll be back with our guests right here on the Ferrandozzi Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. KCARadio.com. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. Zotobia salve, made from natural and organic ingredients, good for inflammation, poor circulation, hemorrhoids, yeast infection, lip sores, dry coughs, eye pain, minor cuts and bruises, and ready to purchase at BotanicaHerbalCO.com. B-O-T-A-N-I-C-A-H-E-R. B-A-L-C-O dot com. Botanica Herbal C-O dot com. Sickle cell trait is an inherited gene. Most people aren't aware of the risk factors and how this gene is inherited. For more information, visit WDCONSCT dot org. You're listening to the Ferrandoze Show on KCAA Radio. 106.5 FM, 1050 AM in the Inland Empire. Also streaming from the KCAA Radar.com website, NBR Radio, TuneIn Radio, Pandora, Google Play, Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, Podcast, Stitcher, Amazon Radio, just to list a few. Oh yeah, and the streaming videos are located at Tiki Live or Rumble under the Ferran Dozier Show. Catch us live or catch us on the archives at the Ferran Dozier Show. Shout us out what's to count. Visit ferrandi.com for more information. Seven stripes, missing colors. Seven stripes. 
All right, welcome back to the Front Doze Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Shouts out to uh, Paul Pratt and the Noah Water. Uh, that's his song right there, yeah. He's a, a former NFL player, singer, produces water. Uh, I love the water. Drink it. Um, and the campaign that's with the water, uh, that rainbow. Noah Water is from the, no the story about Noah's Ark. And um, if you're not familiar with the rainbow, uh, the, the God's Promise rainbow has seven colors. The rainbow that's being used, utilized outside of that has only six colors. Um, and so that missing color is indigo. Indigo represents your spiritual part of your life. And so that color was removed. And so they only use six colors. So when you see those rainbows out there, just make sure you understand which one is out there that you are looking at. Because one of those is God's Promise. And then one of those is just me being utilized, you know, for whatever they're using it for. All right. So this is the Front Nose Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. More, more information about sickle cell trait, WDCONSCT.org. Shouts out to Jody DBC for calling in. Um, being misdiagnosed for 54 years. I mean, we got a lot of work to do in this conversation. We, we're just, just scratching the surface on so many different topics about sickle cell trait so that's what we've dedicated our time to but also you know i have some other things that i care about as an athlete myself not only as a soldier but uh we do sports here too right oh yeah let's so let's get to some sports talk <laughs> so let's bring um let's bring on coach will and uh robert lamar in the zones what's up you know the heme factor <laughs> we got the heme squad, factor you know what it is What's up, then? Hey, quick thing, man. I like the education. Where they at? Did they just get cut off? See, that's what I'm saying. See what happens? If you was in the building, it would be a totally different conversation. So let's bring up their guests. Let's go. You're live with What's the Count. Hello? Caller. Hello? How you doing? How you doing? This is uh, Jeremiah. How you doing? Jeremiah, what's happening, man? Not much, man. Just, you know... Playing football and going to school, baby. All right, all right. I appreciate you for taking time out to hang out with us, man. So um, let's let's not waste any more. I'm, I don't I don't waste time, but let's not <laughs> waste any more air time. <laughs> and of just course, let's in, do that. introduce yourself. Don't give it all away. Just introduce yourself, and we'll get started. Uh, so my name is Jeremiah Smith. Most of you know everybody call me JJ. That's who I go by. JJ. Uh, I go to Calabasas High School. Uh -huh. I play football, run track. You know, athlete. Play a cornerback, nickel. Play a little slot here and there. Returner here and there. Uh, and yeah, just a ball player, baby. Just a ball player. So you, you, I, I, I know if you hanging out with Coach Will, I don't know if you hang out with Coach Will, but I know Coach Will's like you gotta play, you gotta run track that's, and play that's, football, that's right? That's my uncle. Really, man. That's, <laughs> <laughs> always looking out. Always. So when you when you said track and field, I was like, oh yeah, that's 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 part of Will's conversation right there. That's family. Yep, yep, yep. So give me um give me some background, you know, how you stumbled upon football at such a young age. What's going on with that? So I started playing football around nine years old. Okay. Uh I wasn't I'm actually gonna be I wasn't the greatest. I wasn't really that good, like like not like everybody else. I wasn't, you know, popping like that. I was rocking thirty four, you know, a little middle linebacker number. I was fifteen <laughs> digits, you know, coming up. But yeah, just played a little bit towards sixth grade, seventh grade. Uh, I took a break in seventh grade, actually, and then came back eighth grade, you know, got up with uh, Coach Will, uh, you feel me? Played with, you know, his little football team, got me up. And, yeah, just been playing since. Went to Westlake my first two years of high school. And now I'm at Calabasas, baby. Playing ball, pretty much. So I, I got some insight. Oh, we got Coach Will and them calling in back. They're calling back in. So I got some insight. Um, you got you got family that play on your team too. You got you got Love, family that plays on Calabasas. Yeah. Uh, just, that, no, I don't. Uh, I have a, a twin brother. You got a twin brother. What what, what, what what does your twin brother play? <laughs> he played running back. He not you know. I'm not gonna compare myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Wait. So you mean there's two of y'all? <laughs> oh yeah, there's two of us. Not, <laughs> And not identical, fraternal. Okay. But yeah, it's two of us. It's two of y'all. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, so you said you started out, you know, kind of, you know, average. Um, yeah, I wasn't the wasn't the greatest player. What eighth, eighth eighth grade year came around, uh, I met this guy, Coach Air. Okay. You know, he 
taught me everything I needed to know. And I just, ever since, ever since that grade, that was just my breakout. You know, I just started just training, thinking, you know, just working, staying disciplined to my work ethic and just, yeah, just got better. I don't know what it was. All God, you know, just God guided me. And, you know, just been working since. And I just, yeah, just been good. I, I, I appreciate I that. Talent yeah. just came. So let me ask you this, and I'm going to pass you to the coaches. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a middle tough guy. So, you know, right. obviously running track and playing football, um, playing since you was nine, obviously, you know, you've got some mental toughness. Where do you think that, you know, where do you equate that mental toughness from being developed? Your parents, <coughs> your environment, on the field, where where that mental toughness come from? Honestly, my mental toughness, it's come from myself, you know, just being like a small corner, you know, it's just always, you know, just always been overlooked, you know, oh, he's a little guy, you know, just always been, you know, overlooked. So yeah. I just always had, you know, just always felt like there's always been a chip on my shoulder and that's just always been, oh, that's why you got to lock in, you feel me? And they all already counting you out. Right. So it's, it's just always been already in my head, like, you got to get this done, bro. It's like, you got locked in all the time. It's always... That's just how I, you know, say this stuff. So. You know, how, you know, transferring from schools, you know, how is that? I, I, like for me, I bring that up because, you know, a lot of times our identity, especially as an athlete or a service member in the military, our identity is in that uniform. But how did you transition from from Westlake into Calabasas? Was that a smooth transition for you? Uh, honestly, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. a full, smooth transition. You know, there was. A lot of ups and downs, you know, just like, I, you know, just me thinking, man, do I really want to do this? Mm. this right move, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, how they always say grass is not always, you know, <laughs> Exactly. So, you feel me? I was just, yeah. you know, just already, yeah, it was just a lot of thinking, you know, with my family, you know, we was, it was just a lot. Yeah. But we got through it. I felt like I made the best move in my life. I love this team, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, yeah. Yeah. So what what do you what do you do on the track and field side that keeps you keeps you going? What 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 events you do over track there? Track and field, I'm not gonna lie, my mom is the one that <laughs> my mom is the one that keeps me going in that. <laughs> if it wasn't for my mom, I don't, I'm telling you, track it, I don't know. Yeah, my what, mom keeps my head in the track and field. What what do you run in that? Do you run? Are you, you did you pick something to run in, or are you just hanging out in there? Yeah, I, I'm really just running track just to stay fast. I haven't got verified times yet. I just been running track just to you know. Stay in shape over the offseason and stuff. Yeah. Haven't got verified. They're, they're, let me add to that. Go they're ahead. A they're, they're a track family, right? Like they're a big time track family. Yeah. When, you know, there's a little bit more of a personal relationship with that I have with this young man. I was fortunate enough to kind of cross paths with his family when I was young. And his grandfather, you know, opened up plenty of doors for me as a young athlete. Yeah. Um, you know, just coming from a hard knock life. And, and, and you know, his grandfather stood tall with me. Uh, through a lot of uh, down times and up times when I play youth quarterback. And so track is something that their family uh, is big on. You mm -hmm. know, we used yeah. to go to coach's yeah. house, get the swimming pool, do track workouts. Like his grandfather and his family was really serious on, uh, you know, the dual sport. Yeah. Uh, actually, all three sports, whether it be basketball, track, football. His mom was a cheerleader. Uh, she ran track as well. So, it was it was That's really why really she's good. Them. That's why she owned them. That's why she owned them. Yeah, but this <laughs> young man, you know, I would love to to highlight and piggyback off of something that he talked about, which is being um, his mental toughness. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. This is probably the hardest working young man in the country. Wow. Right? I mean, there's literally guys out there that put in work and put in work, and no knock to them. But if you could just really see the heart, the passion, the consistency, the dedication. Uh, I always try to tell my players to, to have a theme, like work with your blinders on, right? Mm -hmm. Like a horse, they run with their blinders, mm -hmm. right? It's all about getting to the finish line. And I just feel like he has that mentality, the dog mentality. He's extremely smart, right? Like mm -hmm. he's literally calling out, you know, the offensive plays mm -hmm. on several plays. Like we had drives going on where I'm listening to this kid just call out the offensive plays and what they're running, right? Mm -hmm. Almost before the coach. This mm -hmm. kid is amazing. And it's all, um, you know, an attestment to the way he, uh, you know, just goes about his daily process, goes about the game. And so, you know, now that he's made his transfer and, and taken that opportunity to go take his game to the next level and, and put himself on a different platform and, 
you know, I don't think he ran from anything. I definitely would say that he was just looking for, you know, just a, a more comfortable environment, something a little bit closer. I mean, I haven't really asked, but it's just, you know, what I've gotten from it. And I just see nothing but good things are coming from the move that he's made, you know, as far as the communication with schools or it being just, you know, a good environment with a bunch of family type of guys around. Yeah. I, I really like that. But I do want to ask a question. Right. Um, you know, as you go forward here, you know, and you're looking, you know, what what is on your agenda, Jeremiah? What is on your agenda? If you could give us two to three things on the agenda for the season, right, knowing where we're at, knowing what amount of time is left in the season, et cetera, what is your, you know, let's say top two to three goals? Honestly, my top three goals right now is all all state. Like, that's just been my thing. All state team, like, I already did all of this, all that. All state team, nine interceptions and seven pick six. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah, all state team and nine, nine interceptions. That's just always been my goals. I got this stuff on my phone, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's, no, that's my See, that's what I mean. Like, I just said, it goes back to his daily process, right? Like, yeah. said, I got this on my phone. Like, you know, when you manifest in that way, things tend to come, you know, to, that's, you know, to yeah, life. That's legit. And, that, yeah, and that's, that's legit. really, really good, man. You know, just keep going, keep driving, you know, don't let nothing, uh, you know, detour you and hinder you from what your goals are, you know, yep. and, and continue to put in the effort in the classroom to allow those recruiters to come, uh, yes. you know, to come for you. Now, yep. I always talk about this. Um, I, I just kind of want to bring some highlight because I feel like it's important to add this to, you know, your resume. You know, how how is it, you know, knowing that you had an uncle who played Division One football at UCLA, played against the best USC teams that probably ever, <laughs> you know, touch the field, right? Mike Williams, Ray yeah. Bush, I mean, you name it. Matt Liners. How is it knowing that you're not so much following in those footsteps, but like kind of blazing your own trail after that has been done? Like, how does that motivate you? I won't ask you how does that make you want to be like him or anything like that, but how does that motivate you and drive you to know that it can be done? Because Matthew wasn't a six-foot corner, six-foot running back. He was probably 5'9", five, 5'10", five, in that area, yeah. very fast. Uh, very, very similar. You guys are very, very similar in style. So, uh, how does that, you know, drive you and motivate you? Honestly, uh, it's just like I, I don't. I feel like it don't like him going to the, you know, league. That's dope. I feel like it really didn't drive me. Like that was just a, like for me. I feel like it should be like how can I explain it? Uh, it's expected. Now, like, mm-hmm. he did it. I know I could do it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I know I yeah. could do it. It's just, like, in my head, it's expected. Like, it's, 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 right. 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 Yeah, that's why I didn't mention it in a way of saying, hey, maybe he, you know, was your inspiration or so forth and so on. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, like I said, definitely, I you know, just knowing really that, like, hey, it, it can't be me. done, Like, right? I inspire myself. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, no, man, you're, you're I think you're a motivation to not just yourself, but to the team and whatever atmosphere, you know, FD, whatever atmosphere this kid walks into, mm-hmm. he's infectious, man. Yeah. All right? He Coaches seems like him, it. He seems like him. it. And how could you not want to have a teammate like him? Yeah, he know? sounds like it for sure. Cool, yeah, man. So I, I look forward to seeing you. We want to get you on live again probably towards um, after Looking we get, you know, probably about four or five games under your belt. You know, let's revisit this and let's see how we're coming along with those goals. Let's see how many interceptions we have. Let's see, you know, how let's we're able it. to make some strides, you know. But I, we definitely want to get you back on, uh, Jeremiah. I call him JJ to the fan. <laughs> uh, a lot of people call him JJ. But, you know, uh, Jeremiah Smith is one of the top premier corners in the class of 25, not only in California, but in the country. Yeah. And if you just want a dog coaches, if you want a guy that you could depend on, coachable, et cetera, this is your guy. No so, doubt. you know, let's go, let, let's do our job, FD, and let's get our guy on that platform. No doubt. Hey, JJ, before you get out of here, man, you obviously as an athlete and running track, man, how important is your hydration, man? Oh, very. Gallon a day. Man, <laughs> man. I'm telling y'all. Gallon a day. Mandatory. No doubt. You guys need a water is key. Hydration is key. No doubt, man. Very. I appreciate you, man.
Amazing. All amazing. right. Next time we want to right, try to so get you yeah. in the studio, you know, maybe we can get you and your brother in the studio. Man, I love this. Great. You guys have a twin brother. He's actually working hard as well. Yeah, we talked about the twin brother as well, so maybe we uh we'll we'll share the stage one night with him too. So Okay. Correct, correct, correct. Cool, well, man. We love you, man. Thank you for coming on. Uh, we look forward to getting you on and you know, blast it out to your friends, let everyone hear this, let the coaches hear this, let your teammates hear this because it's much more to come for you. No doubt. Appreciate that, appreciate that. All right, All right. Jay, man, take it one. easy. Good night. All right. All right, we're going to go to this public service announcement. This is the Frondosia Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCA Radio.com website. Shout out to Alvos Account. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Calmigo. Calmigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. Zotobia salve, made from natural and organic ingredients, good for inflammation, poor circulation, hemorrhoids, yeast infection, lip sores, dry coughs, eye pain, minor cuts and bruises, and ready to purchase at BotanicaHerbalCO.com. B-O-T-A-N-I-C-A-H-E-R-B-A-L-C-O dot com. Botanica Herbal C-O dot com. Sickle cell trait is an inherited gene. Most people aren't aware of the risk factors and how this gene is inherited. For more information, visit W-D-C-O-N-S-C-T dot org. You're listening to The Ferrandose Show on KCAA Radio. 106.5 FM, 1050 AM in the Inland Empire. Also streaming from the KCAA Radar.com website, NBR Radio, TuneIn Radio, Pandora, Google Play, Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, Podcast, Stitcher, Amazon Radio, just to list a few. Oh yeah, and the streaming videos are located at Tiki Live or Rumble under the Ferran Dozier Show. Catch us live or catch us on the archives at Ferran Dozier Show. Shout us out what's to count. Visit FerranD.com for more information. All right. Good evening. Welcome back to the Fran Dozier Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Uh, we've had sickle cell trade awareness tonight, sickle cell beta thalassemia awareness with my guy Jody. We just had JJ. And now our last but not only guest, Silas. You there, man? Yes, sir. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, okay, man. Good. Thanks for thanks for uh, hanging Thank out with us tonight. On here. I appreciate it, man. Cool, cool, cool. So do me a favor. Uh, just do a little introduction, and then don't give it all away, and then we'll get into some conversation with you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Silas Kemp. Uh, I go to Thousand Oaks High School. I'm a senior. I got one more year left, and yeah. Okay. So, so... Some T.O., baby, T.O. <laughs> T.O., he's going to the big T.O. out there. Was that undefeated last year? Ten, was that 10-0? and 0? Yeah, we went, yeah, 10-0 and 0 last year. How, so, so how was that for you? Man, that was that was an experience. It was it was something like I, I've never had a team like that before. We're all connected. It, it, was, it was great. It was yeah. a nice, nice year. So I, I got some notes here. Uh, two-way starter. You play yeah. track basketball. Uh, you do a little golf. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, little bit. Little bit. Little bit of golf too. A little bit. Okay, well, uh, I might have to have you back. We talk about some tea time maybe on another episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you play safety corner. Yeah, safety corner nickel, and I play receiver, and I, I can play a little bit of running back, and then I punt the ball too. Okay. Okay. Um, give me some love for football real quick. How, do, how was that? How did that start? 
man, it's my dad. He played at Oregon. He mm. played safety at Oregon. Okay. So right, you know, right when I was born, football was, you know, that was my thing. And then I've been playing since as long as I can remember. Yeah. And every year I just I grow more more in love to the game and like over the time I really appreciate you know what it's been doing for my life and stuff. And I don't know, I'm just grateful for for the sport. No doubt. I mean, obviously it's in the DNA, right? So yeah. we're, no, we're not surprised. Uh, you know, the influence of your mental toughness, that's what I want to talk about from my piece of this. Um, what do you acknowledge or what do you think you, you want to say you got your mental toughness from developed? You no, know, I, would, I would really say that my mental toughness all came from, you know, joining Coach Will's 7-on-17. Seven no doubt. You know, when I was a sophomore and I really had no exposure I live in Thousand Oaks, and uh-huh. the, you know the talent isn't as crazy as it is in like LA, more like more south in California. Yeah. So when I was when he brought me in, and I was able to experience like all those like do- those dogs out there, <laughs> and it, it was like a humbling, it was a humbling feeling for me because I I kind of I was able to go on these college trips and see what it's like you know to really be a D1 athlete. So. These last two years, I've been really, you know, mentally focusing myself and trying to really grind. That's tight. That's yeah, tight. I, I don't know. I feel like I was a little bit not. I, yeah, I was a little cocky, and then once I really, <laughs> it's fair. Hey, you know what? It's that's fair, yeah. man. That's fair, right? That's, I mean, yeah. you you. Here's the thing about that. I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna pass it to coach. Do yep. you you need a level of that? Right, because that's 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 your self love, that's your self esteem, yeah. that's your self worth. Right now, that's yeah. you need that, but sometimes that subconscious mind can take that to another level, and then you start looking at people from that, and then now you become a little more prideful. Right, so yeah. it's a difference, and we what, what I'm bringing to the table is we don't want to lose that. Right, we want to have you understand how you need some of that, you know, to yeah. keep that self love. Like, right. I'm able to balance it. Right, exactly, yeah. and that's what we want to talk about. That's what I'm bringing mm-hmm. to the table is how to balance that pride out so that you can have that self-love and still give yeah. that love away to your team, man. So I appreciate you for saying that, being humble. Um, Coach Will, what you got for him, man? No, man, you know, it's always exciting to have guys like this on. You know, uh, here at uh, you know Sports Collective Media, we really pride ourselves on giving guys who are really, really good athletes but they're not getting any light in yes, a sense. Yes. And, you know, we pride ourselves on helping I do, young yes, student athletes get that light, that attention. You know what I mean? Shout out to KCAA Radio and Sports Talk, you know, et cetera. Sports Collective Media team as we, we, we try to make sure that we're pro- providing, you know, a great platform for these young men and young women to, you know, have their voices heard yes. and, and expose yes. what great, you know, work they're putting in. Uh, you know, we just had on a great athlete when I told you about Jeremiah, uh, you know, spoke to him. JJ is, is a great a great uh, student athlete, but Silas also brings, you know, that dog. He, you know, when I first met this young man, he just all he wanted to do was work. He mm-hmm. never he never had a you know talk back, no kick back. It was all let's go, let's do a coach. What level you need me on? What group you need me with? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do I need to do to be better? He's always been thankful and, and appreciative to even if it was just conversation. He yeah. was always appreciative to that. And so I felt the need that, um, you know, with no one uh, just kind of like building with the family over the last couple of years, it was important for him to have his opportunity, you know, and mm-hmm. he's such a stud. He is such a good player. <laughs> As you hear, he plays multiple sports, yeah. but then when the football realm, he plays multiple positions, right? Yeah. So how can these guys stay the course, right? <laughs> for real. Wanting to be pulled everywhere, wanting to be transferred and and having guys, you know, tell them, hey, come over here with us and we'll give you this, we'll give you that. Uh, Silas, I'm, I'm only going in that direction because I want you to talk a little bit about, uh, in a brief format, uh, how that was, right, staying the course. You know you had Yabu as a coach, went 10-0 and last year, he goes over to Notre Dame. Mm. Uh, you had nothing but opportunity. You weren't sure what the quarterback situation was. Um, you know, what was your motivation and, and your, your key to anchor with Thousand Oaks and say, you know what, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to continue to water my own grass mm. and see the development because clearly it's working out. Yeah, so I haven't really told no one this, but I, my dad was, I was talking to my dad one day about it. 
he said I, he, he thinks I should pray on it. So mm. that night, I kind of prayed on it, and I actually had a dream that, because I already knew that Jackson was thinking about Jackson Taylor, my quarterback, shout out to him. I already yeah. knew that he was thinking about coming here. So that night, I actually had a dream that we were playing together at Thousand Oaks, mm. and that next morning, I kind of like I knew that I was like comfortable with with To. Mm. I didn't really want to leave. Right, your right, is on right. Point it is hard prayer. to kind of leave home, have to reestablish yourself, and things like that. So, going forward, uh, give us a little update. You know, briefly, how how is it going? You know, how, how do you feel the the your usage versus last year? Like, how do you feel? Do you feel more used? Do you feel more? You know, is it really your you know locked in with that senior year? Like, give me a little bit of a, a comparison there. Yeah, yeah. So this year, yeah, this year I've been, I feel like. I've been playing with another level of confidence just because Coach Matt, my new coach, I feel like he was able to, to you know, kick that next level of, like, confidence in me. I don't know what he did, but mm. over the off season, he kind of kind of all motivated us to thinking that, you know, we are, like, legit. We are those, those dogs. And now right. we all playing together, and we all playing with hella confidence. We playing with swag, and we just, we're able to compete, and this year from last year, I think that I'm just the game has just slowed down so much for me because I've been playing for a while, mm, right. and it's just it's like it's a new feeling. It's kind of like playing with, like just playing like outside with your friends, and you know you're not really stressing. You just just playing. You just playing mm. football. That's tight. Right, right, right. Well, give the people, drop your social media, man, so the people know where to find you, know where to keep up with you, Twitter, Instagram. Let's, you know, drop that on the line before yeah, we get Silas, you out. I definitely Silas, want to get you in studio one. at some point towards, towards the end of the year. It would be great to have you on, get you on live so the people can see you, put a face with the name. And, uh, you know, we wish you, wish you well, man. You know, we only want what's best for you, and uh, let's go kill it, man. So drop your social media for us. Uh, yeah, Silas, one camp on all platforms. And, yeah, I appreciate you guys for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you too, man. And shout out to your pops for telling you to go say that prayer, man. I, I like yeah. that. I like that's that. My so pops. That is, that's number Father's one, man. Father's an amazing guy, man. He has the perfect guidance, man. Perfect family around him. Yes. Father's calm. Very, very, um, you know, balanced in his approach to reality. And I think that those things are very, they're screaming, you know, in Silas, when you see his presentation, the way he carries himself, the way he handles his business on a daily basis, you can definitely say that the family has installed the right things into his character. Sound, definitely sounds like it. We appreciate you for the night, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Cool. Thank you. All righty. This is the Frondose Show, Sports Selective TV, Media, Radio. We got to get out of here. I got to drop this public service announcement. Coach Will, <laughs> man, the heem factor in the zone. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all got to be in the station, man. Yeah, man. I'm not feeling well tonight. I know you're not, there, man. Baby. I, I know, I know. It's hard for me to not be there, man. I, I love know. to be on stage. The people want to see this face. They <laughs> just talking about it. They just talking about it. <laughs> All right, no, man. man. Love you guys, Love man. you, too. Love, love y'all, too, man. Good. Thank you. Uh, KCA Radio, 106.5 FM, Tiffany AM, WDC, Owen, SET.org. More. We'll just see y'all next week, man. We out of here. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. Zotobia salve, made from natural and organic ingredients, good for inflammation, poor circulation, hemorrhoids, yeast infection, lip sores, dry coughs, eye pain, minor cuts and bruises, and ready to purchase at BotanicaHerbalCO.com. B-O-T-A-N-I-C-A-H-E-R 
B-A-L-C-O.com. Botanica Herbal CO.com. Sickle cell trait is an inherited gene. Most people aren't aware of the risk factors and how this gene is inherited. For more information, visit WDCONSCT.org. You're listening to The Ferrandose Show on KCAA Radio, 106.5 FM, 1050 AM in the Inland Empire. Also streaming from the KCAA Radio.com website, NBR Radio, TuneIn Radio, Pandora, Google Play, Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Podcast, Stitcher, Amazon Radio, just to list a few. Oh yeah, and the streaming videos are located at Tiki Live or Rumble under the Ferran Dozier Show. Catch us live or catch us on the archives at the Ferran Dozier Show. Shout us out what's to count. Visit FerranD.com for more information. E-Digits. Lock them in for more